so uh, good evening everyone welcome to uh, yes sir. welcome to the webinar of amity mm -hmm. international society for natural products today we have very eminent guest among us professor valdi and uh, on behalf of our honorable founder president sir dr ashok k chauhan our uh, honorable chancellor sir dr atul chauhan additional chancellor sir dr asim chauhan our vice chancellor ma'am dr balvinder shukla ma'am Uh, group captain kapil shukla sir who is assistant vice president for amity science technology and innovation foundation and from all uh, fraternity amity fraternity as well as all those who have joined from all over uh, the world on this uh, live webinar i warmly welcome you to this uh, uh, webinar and uh, before i request uh, professor valdi sir to uh, deliver his lecture i would like to briefly introduce him so professor valdi sir is associate professor chemical engineering military institute of engineering center of excellence in green chemistry university of york uh, uk uh, he holds a bachelor of chemical engineering obtained at rio de janeiro federal university he has worked in pharmaceutical food and textile industrial areas he is uh, and he has done phd in organic chemistry it was obtained by studying amazonian medicinal plants he has published two books 39 books chapters about 145 articles with over uh, 4660 citations in refereed journals of repute his h index is 29 and over 200 papers in conference proceedings and 13 patents in the field of uh, chemical engineering and natural products other attributes were like he was the coordinator of graduate chemistry course at and member of the thematic committee to reference standards for herbal products in the brazilian pharmacopeia the research in chemical engineering applied to natural product chemistry has the emphasis on the use of oils resins and upscaling the isolation processes of terpenes and alkaloids in view of the above uh, i think this is the best opportunity and we are very fortunate to have you sir today uh, and interact uh, with professor valdeep who will be speaking on the topic phytochemistry by design so sir we warmly welcome you and uh, we request you to kindly begin your webinar Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hajjan. Thank you for the kind invitation. It's uh, very glad to be here talking to you. Uh, that's a presentation. Uh, sim this is presentation is very similar uh, on a, a performance one month ago. I tried to adapt it to this presentation to you. Uh, I'm sorry, but some some uh, slides would be still in Portuguese, but I I explain all of them. in english uh, i try to speak uh, slow in english because uh, you know it's not it's not my mother language here in brazil uh, i i would also ask you to speak uh, slow in uh, in english because you speak too fast and sometimes it's difficult to understand uh, sir uh, I, can... i will speak very very slowly for question and answer session uh, yeah <laughs> so language will language will not be a barrier so yeah yeah <laughs> thank you thank you uh, very nice to be here talking to you uh but this idea uh i uh fetch chemistry by design you have been working with uh, some years and the idea is use more statistical studies Uh, and more planning to perform the phytochemistry uh, work, as you can find the proper quality, the proper destination to the uh, natural products we intend to isolate, to concentrate. Uh, okay, that's the content. of the, my presentation uh, just one slide a little bit about me and some concepts on uh, sustainability and the main idea of phytochemistry by design in 
some examples on how you are using these concepts in recent research with papers and patents that I believe that uh, would be useful to deep on the research. Um, the first topic, a little bit about meter use, studying natural products uh, from my undergraduate studies as a chemical engineering to the military engineering institute today. Uh, this is where I perform my uh, undergraduate students studies, uh, the chemistry institute uh, in Rio de Janeiro, passing by some uh, research institutes in the Amazonia also at the master's studies in California, uh, at the PhD with several universities and research institutes in Brazil. And finally, uh, 12 years working in the Amazonas Federal University in Manaus, this beautiful campus in the middle of the forest. Uh, and then uh, two years, uh, three years now, three years ago, I came back to Rio de Janeiro, that's the, the city where I'm working now. Uh, the Military Institute of Engineering is here. Well, uh, last year I stayed some months of the University of York, York at the Green Chemistry Center of Excellence with Dr. Avta Mataru, uh, that's very, uh, Nice stay in New York, a lot of learning, a lot of collaborations. Uh, that's where my institute stays. Uh, it's another, another picture from Rio de Janeiro, people are more used to. And the Military Institute of Engineering is here at the beach. Uh, it's a very old institution uh, from Brazil, maybe not to, to India, but uh, it was created in uh, 1792, the first engineering school in America, the third in the world. You have nine engineering undergraduate courses and two main uh, master and PhD courses in chemistry and material science. Uh, we are running at this institute three laboratories, uh, green and sustainable chemistry, upscaling process of uh, bioactive production, and biodiversity basic research. It's the three, three main laboratories we are uh, running at this moment at the IMI. And the main collaboration is still in Amazonia, uh, Amazonas Federal University, uh, with York, University of York, and some research institutes in Rio de Janeiro responsible for uh, doping analysis. So we have a lot of uh, high-tech uh, analytical uh, equipment and all, all of this most uh, important equipment to have access with these collaborations. The main working areas: sustainability, green chemistry, renewable resources, metabolomics, and biorefinery, bioeconomy. But this idea is very uh, new. This uh, sustainable uh, research came from some uh, years ago, the last 10, 20 years. This is one event very interesting. I, I, I like, always like to, to show this picture from William Turner that shows this yellow sky uh, that came uh, at the beginning of the 19th century from the eruption of the Mount Tambora, Tambora in Indonesia. So this event was global, was so intense that you have several uh, uh, moments in, in history. And the next year was called the, the year without summer in Europe. Uh, so this event is very interesting because it impacted all over the world. So like uh, in the last century, uh, Hiroshima bomb, the, the creation of the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources, uh, the great fog, the great acid fog in London, uh, the Minamata uh, problem in Japan, and also this, this book, The Silent Spring from Rachel Carson in 1962. Uh, 
open for the first time about the problems with DDT, with the insects, with the poisoning of these herbicides. And this event contributed a lot to create an atmosphere to begin some conference on biosphere in 1968, uh, the Stockholm conference in 1972, the Rio conference in 1992, and then the Rio Plus 20, uh, in, uh, now another uh, view on the sustainability, uh, more uh, holistic, uh, broad aspects of sustainability. So uh, if you had uh, some 20 years ago, the Millennium Development Goals, now you have the Sustainable Development Goals, the 17 uh, Sustainable Goals that should be achieved to countries and companies by uh, uh, 10 years now, uh, 2030. So now sustainability, sustainability is, is a concept more, much more broad than it was before. The, these three principles, and here is the first uh, slide in Portuguese, I'm sorry, you see uh, some of them, but I'll explain. Uh, reduce, recycle, reuse. The three R's that you used to see now are four R's and you include rethink. What is this? It's not to wait to generate the wastes, to think about what to do with this, but try to think about the process before generate the wastes. That's the main idea. Amazon is the most, uh, the, the greater tropical forest is a huge rainforest of several countries, not only in Brazil, but also in Bolivia, Peru, uh, Venezuela, Guyana, Colombia, several countries have some part of this uh, giant region. And we used to say that the sustainability of this region is very hard to achieve. So the development is unsustainable because of the fire, the cattle, the agriculture, the uh, logging, uh, and also some energy, uh, new hydroelectrics. Uh, you have a lot of uh, activities to try to develop the, this region, but none of these uh, activities uh, keep the forest uh, stand. That's the, the main idea to develop the forest with sustainability. Here's several products from the Amazonian biodiversity. Uh, I believe that you have, uh, maybe you see this uh, Guarana, uh, the, at the center of this picture, the uh, Amazonia uh, nut, that's the most common, but there are several dozens of products that could achieve the same importance that you see all over the world from the Amazon nut uh, and Guarana. And now acai, it's a very popular berry all over the world. Very few of these products, uh, this biodiversity finds uh, commercial products. Uh, you can see some perfumery, some cosmetics, uh, some uh, food products, but just to, to, to see some of them, channel number five is made with this product with Pau uh, Rosa, with the trunk of the trees of Aniba roseadora, this uh, a Lauracea uh, botanical species. And the exploitation of these species was so intense that it was almost uh, totally it's almost disappeared from the Amazon region. And now the commerce is regulated by, by seeds, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. So it's very hard to find and to uh, achieve this oil nowadays. There are several uh, examples like this, like cocoa in, in Africa and uh, all, also vanilla, so you have several of these products from biodiversity that have been explored without sustainability. Uh, talking about this one, this uh, Amazonian berry, the acai, uh, it is consumed in Amazon region as sweet uh, or 
uh, salt dishes uh, in huge amounts and it's very interesting that 60% of this material is waste and it's a very huge problem uh, in all of this region. They are used only as fertilizers or to burn to generate energy. Uh, it's very hard to, to discard this, this material. But you can uh, generate extracts from this material and with this extract obtain products to cosmetics, to uh, special foods. And I say it's not the, the it's only one example of several of the Amazon products, uh, mainly fruits that have been explored. Uh, they have access to the poop in sweet dishes and they generate a lot of uh, waste material that could be properly explored. The idea of this presentation, Phytochemistry by Design, what's the main idea? The main idea uh, is that sustainability could be, should be inclusive. Uh, the bioproducts development should generate uh, resources to all the people, not only to companies. Uh, that's the main idea of this uh, 70 goals from development. No one uh, left behind. More production, more uh, waste material. Uh, this material sometimes uh, have some uh, more complex composition because they are fermented, because they are uh, store in not appropriate conditions. So the chemical composition of this material is sometimes very challenging. But uh, if you want to generate new products, you should know how we uh, will generate these products, focusing the uh, final product we are trying to achieve. So if we are trying to achieve a product to cosmetics or to food or to uh, perform the methodologies to achieve this tract would be totally different. The final uh, concentration of the bioactives could be uh, 0.001 or it could be 80%. So you should know what's the main object of the byproduct to plan the whole process of the obtention of these tracts and this quality, these parameters the quality parameters that we intend to see, to observe at these extracts. So the idea is rethink. Rethinking is the main principle of quality by design, a methodology that have been explored in pharmaceutical companies, meaning redefine process to achieve a predefined quality. Needs comprehension how the process parameters can uh, modify the final product. And, and ensure the product quality with effective quality control strategies. Meaning that we uh, need to know deeply the quality control parameters to plan the whole process before we start the process. Uh, several principles of quality by design could be cited as uh, quality targets uh, product, uh, quality control attributes, and several of these are related with quality by design. When we apply it to pharmaceuticals, we are um, very worried about quality, safety, efficacy, uh, the route of administration, dosage, stability, and uh, the identification of the quality control attributes is very important. Sometimes it's the physical, the chemical, the microbiological attributes, sometimes from the active ingredient, sometimes from other materials present in the final product, like the recipients. The main tools of quality by design are design of experiments, process analytical technology, and the definition of the design space how we want to uh, modify these parameters, uh, the, the range of the parameters we want to modify. 
So when you try to apply this to chemistry of natural products, to phytochemistry, performing a phytochemistry by design, the idea is a previous planning of the process to avoid wastes, to avoid products out of specifications, to avoid generate residues. For example, uh, when we try to develop a product to a pharmaceutical company, you should not use a uh, chloroform, a, chlor a solvent with chlorine. If you want to uh, use this product to the food market, you should not use solvents like methanol. If you need to ensure the quality of all the other substances present uh, beside the main active substance, we should not use, uh, for example, hot water that will uh, generate some uh, modifications of your, your material, your raw material. Uh, if you need to, uh, a product to the cosmetic market, you should not perform some in vivo assays with rats, with, uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, in, in vivo assays that now you are performing by in silico uh, strategies. So we need, before we start to collect the plant, you need to analyze all that the quality parameters that you need to the final product, not start uh, collecting and extracting and performing several separations. Sometimes you don't need 99% of purity, several products in cosmetics has 10%, uh, 1% of uh, concentration of the main bioactive. Uh, so if you know how is the uh, main process you want to uh, obtain, when you know this quality control attributes necessary to your final products, then you can plan all the phytochemistry process. That's the main idea. Design of experiments is a very powerful tool to maximize the yield of extraction. But the main idea here is not the maxim maximizing the yield, but maximize the uh, extraction of the target molecules. So sometimes adding some uh, water or some uh, a little bit more ethanol, you can increase the uh, concentration of fatty acids. Or on the other side, you can increase the concentration of uh, glycosides that uh, used not to be the main bioactive substances you are focused. The idea, the main idea is the median polarity substances. So when you uh, use this kind of substances as target, when you are planning to extract alkaloids, flavonoids, and not the uh, fat acids, not the uh, sugars that could compromise the final uh, process of uh, How, how to work with this, this material. So we, when you plan all the process, you can avoid the extractions of these uh, substances that are undesired. So concentration and purity of bioactives is very important. So as the isolation of precursors, some substances, sometimes substances, uh, that could generate, easily generate the bioactives more interesting. You can see the very uh, common, very famous example of taxol, uh, a very rare substance found in the trunk of the trees of the Pacific U. And you need uh, uh, another substance similar to taxol to perform some semi-synthetic steps to achieve this, this substance, paclitaxel nowadays, uh, in very huge amounts. It's impossible to achieve uh, taxol to treat cancer, several kinds of cancer all over the world, uh, just from the trunk of the Pacific eel. So define the process to uh, obtain the 
proper quality of the final products and perform uh, a process that could be not only upscaled, but also you can transfer this technology to uh, communities all over the Amazon region, for example. So when you use uh, high pressure technologies such as um, supercritical extraction, it's very hard to transport this technology to the middle of the forest. But when you plan uh, some extraction methodologies with ethanol, water ethanol, then you can use these technologies in several places in a much easier way easier to upscale, to find the, the solvents, and to transfer this technology to the people. Talking about the Amazon region, have several uh, challenges on bioeconomy, with supply chain, with value chain, to find the proper quality control parameters, to find the quality we need uh, to these products. Uh, Actually, you have a lot of products in the Amazon region, but very few products with high quality patterns. One of the main uh, reason for this is that uh, this region is very huge, but it's very difficult to find uh, great production of specific materials. So you need to find, uh, for example, Kupuasu from several cities all over the Amazon region to achieve a huge amount of material to, be, uh, to, to reach the market. When you mix this material from cities uh, thousands of kilometers away, one for all, yeah, thousands, usually hundreds of kilometers away, you find uh, a lot of heterogeneity with this material. So one material at, located at the eastern Amazonia, uh, such as Kupuasu butter, will have very different characteristics, properties, when you find this very same fruit near Peru at the opposite region in the Amazon region. So when you try to mix all of this material to achieve the market, you have a, a product with no homogeneity, so the value is very low. One uh, approach is, is not to work with this, uh, this methodology to collect huge amounts, to treat the Amazon products like commodities but to treat them as specialities, as uh, DOC. I will talk about this uh, in some minutes. It's very important to define qu the quality control parameters, how to extract a plant to obtain the maximum uh, quantity of the bioactives and not to obtain the toxic substances. You have a lot of these uh, examples for uh, Ginkgo biloba, for example, you have the determination of the bioflavonoids, of the diterpenes, and also you have some substances that are toxic and should not be present at this material, this commercial, commercially available material. So it's not only the traditional, the popular knowledge, but we need to define the uh, quality control parameters to guarantee that you have the bioactives at the proper concentration and you don't, do not have the toxic substances. Talking about this DOC in Portuguese is Denominação de Origem Controlada. You have the, the main principles came, came from France. Uh, it's the geographic uh, denomination of orange that guarantee that the coffee from Colombia is only from one region. The most famous case is the uh, champagne wine. We used to have champagne, all of types of wine with uh, bubbles, champagne, yeah? Now only the wine generated in a very specific region from France can be named champagne. It is uh, 
the same to a lot of kinds of wine from uh, from Portugal, from Italy, and also to cheese, also to very other uh, products. What's the main idea here? It's not to uh, commercialize these products in high volume, but lower volume is more interesting to guarantee the quality, increasing the value. So you're not interested in, in, in trades, uh, acai from Amazonia in hundreds, thousands of tons, but it's much more interesting to define the micro regions inside, inside the Amazon region when you can say there is uh, acai from Eastern Amazonia, from Marajó Island, there is another acai from Peru, there is another one from Colombia. And each one of these materials, each one of these fruits has uh, have specific characteristics, uh, flavonoids, phenols, the amount of uh, sugar, the amount of fat material, very, very different. When we isolate them and try to trade them as specialities, we have this quality with this orange geographic indication. And then we have the sustainability of this trade because you have a high, a high value product. This is a, a paper published in, in, in Brazil, Commodities versus DOC. When you show this uh, different regions in the, the Amazonia, when you can explore the Cupuaçu, Guaraná, Açaí, or the Amazonian nut, each one has very different properties. Let me give you an example. Uh, the main uh, country that, ex that export uh, Amazonian nut is not Brazil, it's Bolivia. But uh, the uh, Amazonian nut from Bolivia has almost no selenium. And you find a lot of selenium when you search the Amazon nut from the eastern region. So the Amazon nut that achieved uh, England, UK, Northern Europe, came from Bolivia, has almost no selenium because it's not the same Amazonian nut at all the regions. Similarly, you can find very interesting bioactive phenols present in Bolivia and not present in the eastern region. So they have very specific patterns that should be known by phytochemistry and should be explored to a proper uh, valorization. Uh, that's a, a new study uh, finished uh, next last month with this um, species Ocotea, Lauracia, several uses from um, popular medicine, several uh, already confirmed biological activities such as cytotoxics, uh, antimicrobian, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant. And we start this study with a huge uh, bibliographic uh, study, uh, bibliographic uh, evaluation, and we saw alkaloids, uh, lignoids, and also some flavonoids. And we could correlate these substances in a chemosystematic study uh, to establish how this chemical substance can add the botanicals to define the uh, identity of the species. Ocotea is a very difficult genus to evaluate inside Lauracea family. It is not called a genus, it's called a complex because uh, it works uh, when you, you don't know where to put some species, you say it's a Ocotea species. So several species from Laurasia are named Ocotea. And with this study published recently, probably this year in phytochemistry, we could correlate the chemical composition with the uh, species in several parts of this Ocotea complexes. Uh, finding some grouping, uh, biomarkers, chemical biomarkers, 
reviewing the chemistry systematic old model and uh, using this new uh, this new tool, the metabolomic analysis, to perform uh, another uh, way to call of this kind of uh, study. We are now call it uh, chemophenetics, not chemosystematics. So it's a, a kind of evolution of this area. We studied it. Uh, then we start to study the medium polarity fractions, performing several chemical studies with chromatography, with spectrometry, with spectroscopy, and uh, also with a lot of statistics to optimize the way we extract to uh, increase the amount of uh, substances present at these medium polarity fractions. So we don't want to see the sugars, we don't want to see the fatty acids, the esterols, we want, we want to see the lignoids, the flavonoids, the alkaloids. So we need to optimize the extraction uh, techniques to uh, increase the extraction of these target substances. Uh, use, of course, design of experiments, several extraction temperatures, uh, the relation of, with the solvent and the sample, the amount of water inside the ethanol extractor. Uh, so the yield varies from 2% to 11%. Very different. Sometimes 1%, 2% is not feasible to find the market, but 11% is excellent. So modifying the way we extract, we can find uh, the way also to uh, put this product, this extract in the markets. So 2% is unfeasible, 11% is very interesting. So we use the surface uh, graphics methodologies to achieve the, the best uh, particle size, the amount of methanol and water, the relationship between uh, the sample and the solvents, and achieve the, the optimized uh, conditions to extract and obtain the, uh, the parameters to allow the study of this species type, Cotea guianensis, the species that define the whole genus, the whole complexes. We published this study recently in uh, Royal Society of Chemistry Advances. That's the name of this uh, uh, seminar, Photochemistry by Design. This paper is a specific study with this species type, Ocotea guianensis, using on target, using global metabolomic analysis. So we uh, now are uh, able to study several other species from Ocotea and group these species based on the previous optimizing extraction conditions. Now we have the parameters, now we know how to separate these groups, to grouping and to define also the economically interesting species based on alkaloids, very uh, active as cytotoxic substances, or the flavonoids, very potent antioxidants. So uh, the, the final of the presentation, some examples uh, using agroindustrial wastes. So when, when you talk about the Amazon region, it's very difficult to find huge amount of any material. But when you talk about fruits, so we have a, a chain uh, economically well-defined, so we can find the wastes material from these agro-industrial uh, companies that produce uh, poops, that produce oils, that produce oil resins, very interesting with uh, great generation of uh, material. So uh, that's uh, some examples I will give to you. We start with a huge products involving several institutions in the Amazon region, several products, acai, abiu, acerola, uh, the most known, uh, castanha, the Amazonian nuts, uh, cupuaçu, but several uh, very poorly known fru products, uh, fruits that are uh, normally commercialized, traded in the Amazon region. 
For example, at the Kupasu, we find a huge amount of this substance that is, has a high value at the market, epigallocatechin. Also, we have several different chantines, different from theobromine, from caffeine, that are being used in the market as some uh, super uh, food. So you can extract this material, not from the pulp that already have a, a, a trade, but from uh, other parts, from the waste material from this industry. Uh, it's a, a paper published in 2070 with this other fruit, Cariocarvilosum, uh, showing the anti-inflammatory uh, properties from seeds, from poops, from husks, uh, and compare it with quercetin, so, uh, typical of phytochemistry. You stood, you study uh, showing different extracts and how uh, different parts of the plant can be bioactive. Uh, returning to acai, we have a huge amount of wastes. We start the study with this review paper uh, published at Food Chemistry, Amazon, acai chemistry and biological activities. Uh, very well cited uh, paper. We showed the main substances present at the, this, this fruit. Uh, there are only three species from acai. Euterpi precatoria, Euterpi oleracea, and another one the south of the country. But these two is the main species in the Amazon region. The amount of phenolics, the amount of flavonoids are uh, very, very different. And we can improve the extraction of this material, modulating the technique, modulating the amount of ethanol we use. When you try to optimize the, the extraction of the specific substance we uh, are interested in, to, uh, we saw that residues could be 60% of the biomass of this waste, and the yields could achieve 10, 12, even 14% of this biomass. And you can improve the tantal phenolic to achieve about 14% of phenolics from this material. Uh, some uh, other results I, I'd like to, to talk about show that using uh, more difficult technologies to, to, to be transferred to communities, but using supercritical fluid or uh, hot water extractions in some uh, specific pressure and temperature conditions, you can uh, obtain extracts as antioxidants, as the pattern, as the standard uh, quercetin, an extract, not an isolated substance. Let me talk now about the oils, the oil resins from the Amazon region. This uh, is one very interesting, it's a copaiba oil. It's not a fixed oil, it's not a fatty oil, it's not an essential oil extracted with uh, uh, hot water. It's an oil resin. We make with, uh, we extract it directly from the trunk of the tree. And it has several, several properties, mainly uh, healing, uh, anti inflammatory, uh, and respiratory and urinary traits. We start this project with some review papers from 2002 and the most recent from 2012 and start studying anti-inflammatory properties, uh, anti-edematogenic activities uh, from some species, from commercial oils. We find that some of these uh, commercial oils are uh, adulterated with diesel and with uh, soy oil and related soy oil vegetable, other vegetable oils, fat oils. And then when we study the anti-inflammatory activity, we see that copaiba oils are very bioactive, but this kind of adulterated oils can promote the inflammation. So when you don't have proper uh, quality control parameters to know if this oil is pure or not, or adulterated, 
sometimes you can uh, buy this oil at the market with more diesel oil than Copaiba oil. This study was very interested, showing different um, properties from Copaiba oils and from uh, its uh, and their fractions. What you saw here that you can uh, act on melanoma tine cells and the Copaiba oil is more active than its fractions. Okay, the fractionating process could generate this, but when we regroup the fractions, we find the activity again. So we saw here a very interesting synergistic effect that you prove later. That's the main composition of uh, oil resins. Uh, a volatile part made mainly by monoterpenes or sesquiterpenes, and another one, a resinoid part made by diterpenes and triterpenes. In the case of Copaiba oil, the volatile part is made by sesquiterpenes, and the resinoid is made by carboxylic SD diterpenes, mainly from these three classes, mainly from these three backbones, labdan, clarodan, and caudan. That's three major backbones present in Copaiba. The main substances are cariophyllene and copalic acid and its derivatives. Cariophyllene is very interesting. Some recently published uh, papers have shown that this substance could be a new cannabinoid substance without having this uh, cannabidiol, so this kind of uh, backbone, but has the same or similar activity at uh, the cannabinoid receptors. So several industries are working to extract the cariophyllene from copaiba oils. So select what kind of copaiba oils, uh, what kind of copaiba oil has a huge amount of cariophyllene, distillating this uh, sesquiterpene to commercialize it pure. So you need the cariophyllene in 80% pure to achieve the cosmetic market. And to this project be feasible, you need a copaiba oil with at least 60% of cariophyllene. It's not usual, it's not the same composition in any copaiba oils. So when we, again, when we search a copaiba oil from the Eastern Amazonia, it's very, very different from the Western Amazonia. Different species, different in, uh, biotic and abiotic effects that will change the chemical composition. Always more sesquiterpenes and diterpenes, but the uh, amount of these materials can be very complex or can be uh, only cariophyllene, for example. In this case, when you distillate the oil to obtain the beta cariophyllene, all of these diterpenes are waste material. These diterpenes are waste from the distillation process. They are discarded, it has no value, but you, you see that you, they can have, they can show several biological properties. That's the main idea. Cariophyllene is a CBD-like, without being, uh, uh, without came from, from cannabis. So it's very interesting product to the industry. Let me show this, this study published in 2012 uh, with isolated substances from Copaiba oil. Here we are, I'm showing to you substances two and three, the copalic acid two and the copalic acid three with uh, derivatized with some substituent at this position three, uh, a hydroxyl group. And also showing to you the other substance, the beta cariophyllene eight. When you studied this, all the substances, we observed several activities uh, uh, related to cytotoxicity to uh, Trypanosoma cruzi, to Chagas disease. But the more interesting information is that when we join substance two 
propylic acid, the substance 8, caryophyllene, beta caryophyllene. The uh, synergistic effect observed is the reduction of the lotto dose in 50 times. Uh, I'm sorry, in 25 times. So it's a very, very different effect. It, when we join this, this, these two substances, the activity is much more higher. But very interesting also is that when we join the free hydroxy derivative from the copalic acid with the same caryophyllene, we observe a negative effect at this synergistic effect. So with the proper ditropin, you can increase the activity 25 times or you can decrease the activity about three to five times. So now you have the quality control parameters to use these copaiba oils to treat Chagas disease. Oh, so here you have this problem. Copalic acid with this free hydroxy group can decrease the activity. So we don't want to see this 3 hydroxy copalic acid at the copaiba oils. If we intend to use this oil to trypanosoma cruzi uh, treatment. But this very uh, same substance show other activities. When we're studying leishmaniosis, uh, with several copaiba oils, analyzing in vivo uh, performance of the oils, and later the activity of selected substances, the main active substance to leishmaniosis present in copaiba oil was precisely 3 hydroxy copalic acid, alone, without any synergistic effect with cyclopenes or diterpenes. So that substance that present uh, in copaiba oils could decrease the activity when we intend to uh, treat trypanosoma cruzi would be very, very inter interested to be extracted, purified to treat leishmaniosis. The same substance is sometimes very uh, good sometimes is, is not desired at all. So only phytochemistry can show it to you. So when you plan what kind of copaiba oil you need to formulate to treat leishmaniosis, what kind of copaiba oil you intend to formulate to treat uh, Chagas disease, you have these quality control parameters now. We start to perform in several uh, studies with formulations with nanoparticles, including silver, uh, studied to mainly to anti-inflammatory, but also to uh, cutaneous wound healing, related also with leishmaniosis. Uh, some uh, nano uh, auto emulsified systems controlling the delivery of beta caryophyllene sometimes, analyzing how beta caryophyllene is, is being absorbed with uh, hydrogels, non-emulsions, and then we have finally this, uh, of, of course, at this formulation studies, we will also use design of experiments to uh, optimize the, the conditions. And uh, finally, you have this anti dematogenic effects very well established and some patents uh, ready to be uh, negotiated with industries. We're using silver nanoparticles, we're using uh, inclusion uh, complexes, uh, using uh, colloidal systems. So several systems apply to human, applying to dentistry, applying to veterinary use. Uh, we have a lot of potential markets to, this, uh, to these materials. Okay, let me finish with this oil, oil resin, mirror, incense. 
all of them came from the same uh, botanical family, Buxeracea. From this botanical family, this, uh, these oil resins are naturally exuded from the trunk of the tree. When they are freshly exuded, you can find 20, 30% of essential oil. With some time, this essential oil evaporates and there, the oil resin crystallizes and you have about less than 10% of essential oil and a huge amount of tritopines. Tritopines like usan, like lupin, several backbones, mainly amidine, brain, and malinagel. The most interesting, the, the most common uh, composition is a resin uh, huge with huge production of alpha marine and beta marine. These uh, two substances, alpha myrinone and beta myrinone, are very rare. It's very difficult to find a species that produce them. So we try to analyze several different species from all the Amazon region and start to look what's the main uh, chemical composition. And we find that some species produce volatile compounds, very interesting to cosmetic industry, but other resins are not well producers of volatile oils and we produce amirines or we produce amirinones. That's the main objective. We start to isolate that substances and we try to transform uh, amirin in a mirinon to perform uh, bioactivic studies in vitro, in vivo, some formulations, inclusion complex, uh, anti inflammatory studies, uh, pharmacocinetic studies, physical chemical analysis to achieve that this substance, the amirinone, that's a very rare substance, but easily achieved by the oxidation of amirin, have some uh, digestive enzyme inhibitor and can be used as hypoglycemia, hypolipemia, and anti obesity. We start working with this material with several uh, pharmaceutical companies in Brazil, try to put this material in market. As you don't have a lot of this material, but you have a lot of uh, precursor, a lot of the beta alpha beta amirin that you can easily transform at this to this molecule. Well, the uh, concluding remarks. I'm sorry, this all in Portuguese. Uh, the sustainability should guide the projects. Uh, using green chemistry, that turns the projects more feasible. It's essential to use green chemistry. You need to be worried about all the actors. Not uh, uh, some, some, times ago, some time ago, you, you look only to the stakeholders, only to the pharmaceutical company. Now you need to look to the communities, to look to the people that you uh, share this material, to collect this material, uh, the, the, the chain value could generate richness to these people too, not only to the pharmaceutical company. Uh, working with the waste material, you increase the value chain, so you guarantee all this chain value. You guarantee that you can find the proper amount of material. This amount shouldn't be huge amount, but should be treated as specialities with high uh, quantity, with high technology amount, not uh, with low uh, quality and, and be treated as a commodity. The bioactivity should be seen as wide as possible including well-being, including some substance that could be some CBD-like effect. So you, you, maybe you could use a cosmetic that have a, a neurophysiological effect also. That's the, what the, the cosmetic industry is looking for. Not only the beauty, but the wellness, this concept that the whole 
uh, uh, being, human being could be uh, affected by that material. So bioactivity should not be only anti-inflammatory and only healing, but should be seen in a widely way. Planning should is essential before initiating the project. Define all the parameters, what do you need, what kind of bioactive you need, what kind of formulation, what kind of extract. Then use design of experiments as part of the quality by design, not only design of experiments, but the whole concept of quality by design to plan the whole project. Doing this will not generate residues. We'll think about it before. We'll not recycle, reuse. We'll not produce waste material. We'll plan that that kind of uh, byproducts will have a market. And this, this kind of thing you only achieve when you plan the whole project. And a project with impact, with importance, could have planning, statistics, and a lot of collaborations. So here are some of the scientists that work with me on the north of Brazil, from the south, mainly from a Celtico, uh, uh, institutes working with bioactivities, working with formulations. Uh, I'd like to, to invite you to, to see some of our recent published papers. I, I'm working now at this military institute of engineering, so we have a lot of research with ballistic uh, uh, products, anti-ballistic uh, products, uh, not only to mechanical properties, but also to gamma radiation. So you have several products to be used uh, by military forces in Brazil. And one of those products is uh, piper spray, pepper spray. Uh, pepper spray obtained from capsicum genus. So we performed several studies on the methods to analyze the composition of these capsaicinoids. And now we start working with these different strategies to extract these materials, to generate a oil resin, a pepper oil resin with desired capsinoid content that could be not toxic, but uh, achieve the, the, the defect uh, intended by the military forces. This, another one is, uh, was published some weeks ago, uh, Natural Products are All Against COVID-19 is a, a key question now, everybody's working on it. And we are trying also to develop process to extract in a sustainable way some of the substances that in silico have already shown some uh, activities to COVID-19. And I would like to finish showing a little bit of Amazonia to you. Sometimes people only uh, know about the huge rivers. Uh, here we have uh, this little point here are huge uh, oil transporters. So this distance is about uh, 15 kilometers, 18 kilometers. It's very huge rivers, but you have these flying rivers all over the Amazon region. We have under uh, the, the traditional rivers, we have other rivers flowing in a very uh, dramatic way, also uh, increasing this, uh, decreasing the salinity of the Atlantic Ocean. We have bowling rivers about 60, 70 degrees near Peru beautiful places with uh, white sands, with uh, beautiful water, uh, several different uh, landscapes, such as these mountains in the Amazon region. And also, uh, always are always talking about biodiversity, but the main biodiversity I like to, to to show and finish this presentation is the human diversity. About 30 million people that is living in the Amazon region that uh, should be protected by keeping the forest stand, by uh, generating technologies 
that could be transferred to these communities that could be ensured that they will survive with the commerce of the, the bioproducts. Uh, thank you very much. This is uh, my contact. Uh, I hope I, I, you, you can uh, understand my, my English. Uh, and I'm sorry, but some, some of the slides are still in, in Portuguese. Thanks. So. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Waldi. And uh, I don't think so language uh, was uh, anywhere a barrier. Uh, you know, your English, everyone was praising and it is all about the content and we, were, we are again honored to have you. And uh, as I had introduced uh, Dr. Rajiv Sharma, sir, and uh, group captain Kapil Shukla, sir, to you during our conversation uh, before uh, starting this uh, webinar. So both of us have joined us in the panel and uh, we have got few questions also, but I think... Uh, in, uh, I, I just like to say, then I'll uh, pass it on to the our esteemed panelists, uh, uh, sirs. Uh, like uh, the self-defense spray, uh, uh, our Institute of Phytomedicine has a patent on that, and it also works on. Um, it also produces temporary blindness for almost two hours, and uh, uh, we can really work on that. And uh, we have. Uh, Dr. D.D. Joshi also in phytochemistry who works on, uh, uh, who has worked a lot on uh, capsicum and chilies and uh, we have uh, a group of uh, herbal research and studies, uh, Dr. Dhan Prakash and Dr. Charu we have, who have worked on agri-waste. So we have uh, all those uh, areas and uh, you have really given us an insight into the nature's pharmacy, what is called the remarkable plants of Amazon uh, rainforest and uh, we have got, uh, I think if I'm not wrong, there are more than 80,000 plant species uh, which are present in the Amazon uh, forest. And uh, as you work for defense, so we have uh, in the panel, uh, the fighter pilot uh, group captain and because you are associated with engineering and math and physics, so we have an expert uh, Dr. Rajiv Sharma, sir, who is DG for Amity Institute of uh, 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 International Alliances and uh, he's also uh, 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 chief uh, scientific advisor to our honorable founder president, sir. So I will request the panelists and then I'll take up a uh, few questions. Uh, we will be slow in asking. <laughs> so thank you so much. So over to the panelists. Uh, Sharma, Thank you, Doctor. Uh, and yeah. you, you, are, you are open to, to, to collaborations in, in chemistry, phytochemistry, material science. Uh, I, I believe that you can uh, perform excellent collaboration and have similar uh, problems in Brazil and in India. You can certainly collaborate in, in some projects, uh, mainly with uh, uh, some students that can go to your place and, and come to Brazil. Uh, it's, not, it's not the proper time to, to, to travel, but I, I'm sure that you can plan it now and start uh, working uh, in, a, in the near future. I think after March, sir, after Oxford uh, gives us a vaccine, uh, definitely uh, we can start moving. Uh, yes, sir. So over to the panelists, the group yeah. captain Shukla and Rajiv Sharma, sir. And then I, I would request Dr. Rajiv Sharma to speak first. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, and thank you, Dr. Uh, Valder. Uh, very interesting topic, actually, and uh, very clearly explained the things. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, you. Uh, you already know that Dr. Harsha Kharakwal is uh, heading these efforts in MIT University. And uh, she might have told you about the work, actually, which we are doing. And uh, uh, it is my job basically to look for the collaboration. And uh, you have already mentioned about the great possibilities which we are having actually. Uh, so we should certainly like to have a very, very active collaboration. And of course, uh, the Indian government also have a lot of opportunities actually for collaborations uh, with Brazil. I have been to Brazil actually a couple of times, uh, not now, but almost 10 years back. <laughs> I was there when we are, I was heading the uh, India-Brazil-South Africa program. Uh, that time I had a chance to 
go uh, to uh, to uh, rio of course two times i was there and uh, brasilia i was there actually uh, great to know uh, you and uh, looking forward to a very collaborative uh, uh, research actually collaboration between two of us thank you very much thank you uh, thank you uh, we are open to this kind of collaboration mm -hmm. very interesting collaboration we know that uh, we uh, you make more powerful more interested uh, science when we work together with several scientists with different views of the the same problem yeah. and, and i believe that's very interesting to to this possibility to collaborate okay. thank you <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Walder. It was a pleasure listening to uh, your presentation. Actually, like you have uh, uh, extreme biodiversity in the Amazonian area in uh, Brazil. In India also, we have the Himalayan sector and the peninsular India. We have uh, extreme biodiversity. And uh, like you, we have a lot of aromatic and medicinal plants. Uh, we have done a lot of um, uh, sort of uh, uh, research on this because our ancient people they used to uh, you know use mostly herbal medicines, and I think uh, Brazil being a younger country, uh, a lot of work can be done on the uh, medicinal and aromatic plants which are available in the Amazonian area. Uh, we have a very good uh, setup here. Uh, Dr. Harsha is looking after that about phytochemistry. And I think there is a lot of uh, scope of uh, uh, collaboration uh, with you and uh, your organization. Incidentally, I am from the Air Force, and we also have a military college of engineering at Pune. It was established in 1790-something by the Britishers. Who, <laughs> who ruled there for some time. And uh, I have had the opportunity to uh, undergo a couple of courses there. So it was nice to see your establishment next to the beach. Uh, this ours one is next to a river. Mm. So it will be very good that uh, we will be able to collaborate. I have been once to Brazil because when we were doing buying Embraer uh, commercial jets from Brazil for the VIP movements, etc. You are the ones who are producing that. So I had been there at that time and one of my friends, he was also posted there in the embassy. We look forward to where Brazilians are very warm and nice people like Indians are. And we surely look forward to uh, collaboration with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have my, my email contact. And uh, Dr. Hasha has my, my uh, telephone number that you can contact me easily by, by WhatsApp. So uh, anytime oh, we want to, sure. to start talking about some collaboration. Sure, we will do that. We'll do that. We we'll look forward to that. Yes, sir. During this panel, we will start with a joint manuscript also. And uh, uh, sir, can I take two questions? Two questions can I take? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there are 10 questions. I will send the rest of them to you. But... Uh, the first question is from uh, Dr. Anita, and she's asking, what could be the best solvent for extraction of polyphenolic compounds in plants with respect to flavonoids and non-flavonoid compounds and uh, the purification solvent for extraction of polyphenolic compounds, sir? Uh, I believe that the, the best uh, model you have been using is the hydrocolic solvents. So you use ethanol, water, and sometimes to, to uh, some flavonoids and some polyphenols, you need to adjust the pH. Uh, it's not so, so difficult, but the kind of concentration you use with salts, with water and ethanol. That's the, the main solvent you have been using because of the low toxicity, it's easy to find. Uh, it's, you have, don't have some uh, explosion problems. Uh, you have some facilities to, to, to transportate and to, to, to store this material. And uh, you have, of course, that uh, every choice uh, brings some, some uh, problems. So you have uh, you need a lot of energy to take this uh, solvent off. It's easier to use a uh, eater, a ether. It it's very easy to use uh, chloroform, uh, 
uh, when we want to uh, take off the solvent. Yeah, when you use hydrocolic solvents, it's uh, sometimes very hard to take off all the solvents. You need to uh, utilize this material. It's, you need other technology that are energy uh, intensive. But the best solvent certainly is the water with ethanol with some modifier uh, to pH, to increase the water uh, action. Uh, some, some other material, mainly uh, some salts. We have been working with uh, three phasic, three phasic uh, systems to extract more polymeric systems, more polymeric uh, substances like polyphenols. Uh, so I, I believe that water with some ethanol and the addition of a uh, salt with control of pH would be the best strategy to start a, a, a work uh, it depends on the the metrics, depends of the kind of polyphenol you intend to extract, but uh, I, I will start with this uh, hydrocolic solvent with pH control and some soft addition. Okay. Uh, so Adding. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. And the second, the last question. Uh, because we have around 12, 11, 12 questions, but I'm just asking one more. Uh, how carophyllene can be isolated by column chromatography as it is a sexy terpene hydrocarbon? There are chances of conversion of uh, caryophyllene uh, to caryophyllene oxide. There are E and Z caryophyllene, which one is having more biological potential? So, do you have any idea, sir, of this? Uh, uh, I, I lost the, the, the point, the, the, well, uh, the question. How, yeah. how to extract by column chromatography? Uh, yeah, he is asking about one compound that is caryophyllene because it quickly transforms, yeah. converts to oxide. So, can it be isolated by uh, column chromatography as it is a sexy terpene hydrocarbon? So can sex three terpene hydrocarbons be isolated by column chromatography? If they have E and Z conformations, like if they can take E and Z conformations, so can they be isolated? Yeah. Yeah. When, when you think that the traditional, the classical phytochemistry, we always think in, in the column chromatography, of course, uh, but it's not, feasible to achieve huge amount of materials uh, to, to, to trade these materials using uh, column chromatography. We have some, some, some parts of, uh, I, don't, I don't know if in, in India, but uh, certainly in China, uh, several companies using HPLC columns, huge columns with more than one meter, uh, several kilograms of, of absorbent. It's a, it's a very huge, but it's not common. So uh, yeah, it's, it's not difficult to isolate these triterpenes by column chromatography. And, but caryophyllene is, is more tricky because uh, it easily oxidates to form, to form the uh, caryophyllene oxide. So it's easily to try to uh, separate the resinoid fraction. He used to do this by, um, uh, some uh, ionic resins. So uh, as this uh, non-volatile fraction is all uh, formed by carboxylic acids, so you can, uh, using these this resins, you, you can trap the carboxylic acids and obtain the sesquiterpenes uh, in, a, in a pure way. But to concentrate the caryophyllene, you use to distillate it. You use this lady mainly use it uh, vacuum using low pressure. Uh, of course, you can uh, obtain uh, caryophyllene directly from clove oil, directly from uh, copaiba oil, just distillating it. Uh, but you need several uh, plates to perform a, a, a high quality isolation of this caryophyllene. So it, it can be a, a, a achievable by. Uh, 
low pressure distillation. But of course, when you perform column chromatography, we also uh, isolate cariophyllin, but you uh, will mainly oxidize this cariophyllin. Yes. So uh, thank you so much, sir, for your valuable time. I thank our esteemed uh, panelists and especially you, sir. Uh, like uh, we would like, uh, like we will be collaborating you, uh, collaborating with you for uh, different aspects uh, of phytochemistry and phytomedicine. And uh, uh, on behalf of our honorable founder president, sir, Dr. Ashok K. Chauhan, sir, our chancellor, sir, Dr. Uh, Atul Chauhan, our additional uh, chancellor, sir, Dr. Asim Chauhan, vice chancellor, ma'am, Dr. Balvinder Shukla, ma'am, and from the complete scientific fraternity, the students, and uh, from, uh, from everyone uh, who have joined us today from around the globe. Uh, I thank you all. Have a great evening. And to uh, you, sir, again, a very good morning. And thank you for, uh, you know, sparing you your time. And uh, we will be in touch, sir, and I'll be sharing your number with both Rajiv Sharma, sir, and Kapil Shukla, sir. And... Uh, we will be in touch yeah, for yeah, sure. project and the student and faculty and all collaboration. Yes, sir.